Last week, I travelled into the ghost realm with the help of an alcoholic wizard and the noble sacrifice of my ghostly companion, Stephen. Once in the ghost realm, I encountered a freaky-looking half-man, half-deer creature who wanted to play the flute for me. While I deal with him, I'm wondering what's become of Stephen and the two hipsters I came here to find. Find out this week on another exciting edition of Investigations of the Oddly Strange. Episode 3, The Chronicles of the Wardrobe, Lion and Witch. Investigations of the Oddly Strange, written and performed by Dean Franklin. Well, it's nonny, nonny, no, wandering through the snow, through the woods we go, wandering along we are, wandering very far, I wish we had a car, it's nonny, 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 nonny. Ah, for Christ's sake, shut up! You're doing my bloody head in with that wee fleet. Play another note, and I'll shove that thing where the sun don't shine. Usually, my flute music and lovely singing voice makes people drift off into a restful slumber. How? Puts my teeth on edge. It's like hearing Celtic fans singing. Plus, it must be minus eight out here. Only a lunatic would fall asleep in the snow. Where are you taking me anyway, you little freak? We've been expecting you, you see. I'm taking you to the leaders of this place. Well, where are they? Tumnus, why is he awake? Ah, for crying out loud. I've got a nasty feeling I know what's going on here. Oh, really, little boy? Well, you must be freezing cold. How perceptive. Maybe it's the testicle-level snow everywhere. Here. <coughs> well, that is much better. I suppose your wee sleigh is stuck full of Turkish bloody delight as well. So it is. How clever of you. And if you'll just... No, I'm not playing. Disney owns this shite. We were playing with fire last week as it was. Right, that's enough. We did the copyright jokes last week. We all know what's going on here. Pick a name each that won't get anybody sued and we'll crack on. Which? Lion. Audrey. Try again. Thomas? Fine. Good. Continue. Greetings, Colin. I've been tracking you and Thomas here since you arrived. Look, all this has gone on long enough. You three clowns need to tell me where I can find two young hipsters and an East End gangster so I can get back to my nice, normal life punching ghosts in the face. Hipsters, hipsters, hmm, yes. Two did come through here. Thomas didn't even need to lull them to sleep with his flute. One of Cray's men came through and drugged them with ironic cocktails. Alex summons Rapshi! Cray's got them already? Yes. Well, normally, if any humans come through here, Witch and I capture them and send them off to Cray. But this time, they were expected. Just like you were, Colin. What? You bastards work for him too. I expected this behaviour of this mangy little tit and that evil witch. But what's your excuse for being out here, little lion man? Let's just say I've made some questionable comments about race that have forced me into a snowy exile. Well, you're not taking me to Cray. I'll take you all on. Calm down, Colin. We're not planning on handing you over. No, we need you. Need me for what? Let me explain, Colin. <laughs> hey, hey, little man, it's okay, don't cry. 
Put everybody down. Wait, you look familiar. Oh, it's you two. The hipsters. It's you, the ghost from the bridge. Oh, cool. So nice to see you again. Why have you chained yourself to our wall? Is it for art or something, like a Banksy? If it is, then I love it. If it isn't, I'm going to have to ask you to stop trespassing. Trespassing? This is Ronnie Gray's ghost dungeon. I'm not here by choice. You're not? We are. You came here by choice? Well, of course. Mr. Cray was all like, I'm taking you to Ronnie Cray's ghost dungeon. And we were like, cool, sounds like an amazing bar. And he said, yeah, sure, it's a bar. In fact, you two can help me run the place. Amazing, right? We only pay £500 rent a month, and this whole cool place is ours to run however we want. Can I get you some sourdough toast? <sighs> Have you tried leaving yet? Or why would we leave? It's amazing. Exposed brick, concrete floors, original wood furniture, no natural light. It's like the best place ever. The only downside is all our customers seem to be screaming in terror or crying in despair. We're trying to get Stuart Lee to come in and cheer them all up, but the signal is terrible in this place. We haven't managed to get through to him. I'm afraid Ronnie Cray has tricked you. Your prisoner's here, just like me. Oh no, not again. We're always getting tricked into imprisonment. Yeah, this horrible man once kidnapped us in a van. He said he had, like, three fold-up bikes in the back. I've done it to pay him six million pounds to get us back. I want to go home. I've got anxiety. Calm down. We just need to find out what's happened to Colin. Oh, the old fat man. Mr. Cray said a witch, a lion, and a wardrobe or something would bring him here. He's in the land of definitely not Disney property. Oh, God. Well, well, well. Stephen the Grass. How are you getting on in my dungeon of eternal bloody torment? Prepare to... Oh, oh, well, hello, Pippa, uh, Tristan. How are you finding your boutique co-working pop-up space? Don't try that on with us, Mr. Cray. We know this is really a dungeon. You are a rogue landlord. Yeah, I'm calling Nick Knowles and Dominic Littlewood. Whatever. They sold their immortal souls to me long ago. How do you think they've stayed employed this long? I thought it was a complete lack of shame, not a complete lack of soul. Guess it adds up. Shut it, Stephen, you punts! Now, tell me what you told the fat Scotsman. Not as much as you'd think, Cray. Your little secrets are safe enough. But he's coming for you. And when he does, your reign of terror will be over. The other side will be free again, and all the people trapped in here will be released. Yeah, we'll see. So you didn't really give him the full picture, eh? By episode three? Please. I'm a class act. Something you'd know nothing about, Cray. <laughs> oh, you dirty little shit. Was that aimed at me? Yes. Sorry, young man, my aim's a bit off. Little bastard spat right in my eye. Well, enjoy yourselves down here, everyone. I'll be sending your friend Colin down to join you shortly. Then you'll be stuck here for eternity. <laughs> oh, oh, for God's sake, stop the spitting. Oh, oh it's like living up north. <laughs> this is the forest of magical creatures and forgotten intellectual property. Do you begin to see now, Colin? I do. Well, this place is great. 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 This place is a prison, Colin. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's great for me to see all these things. It's more like a zoo. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, Attenborough. I get your point. So how can I help? I'm just one man, after all. All of us are trapped here on the other side, Colin. Ronnie Gray keeps us all here, doing the bidding of his masters in the human world. All these magical creatures and fantastic beings that the human world is no longer interested in. And it's a shithole. So you want me to take down Ronnie Cray? On my own? I'd like nothing more, but since I've started this adventure, I've realised I'm not as great a battler of the paranormal as I thought. In fact, I'm pretty bad at the whole thing. I only beat a vampire with Van Helsing's help. And I only beat the Dark Wizard with Steven's help. I'm no good on my own. You've got help, Colin. All of us will stand up to Ronnie Cree. But we need a leader. A leader like you. Me? I'm just a professor from the University of Northeast Guernsey. I'm no revolutionary like Che Guevara or Jamie Oliver. Well, that's nothing that can't be fixed. You just need a makeover. Yes, Colin. That's why we're taking you to be queer-eyed. Hooray! I'm sorry. I, I don't really know what that is. You will, Colin. You will. We spend all day singing with a mate. I always eat me dinner off a plate. We always pronounce pate pate. Cause we're looking for an evil bloke is great. Oh yes. Another great day as an evil henchman, boys. Life is good. That grassing ghost Stephen and those bloody hipsters are locked up. No sign of that fat Scotsman yet, neither. Well, flying monkey one, he's probably got lost in the frozen forests of not Disney property. That lion and the witch will get him if he does find his way out. Oh yes, everything is under control. <laughs> Flying monkey too. What's wrong? <coughs> Is he now? So those washed up losers think they're going to get out of here, do they? Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. Relax, relax. Put down those guns. There's no need for an epic battle yet. Huh? I am going to phone the lawyers. Yes, hello there. I have information on a possible copyright infringement. What? Where are you calling from? Well, hell, essentially. Perfect. We got millions of our guys down there. I'll send someone right over. I'm a lawyer. That'll be 17 grand. What for? A house call. I only called you to give information. My apologies. I'll just cancel this invoice. That'll be free grant. What for? Administration fee. I'm not paying that. Then I'll see you in court. Say, you need representation? Only if you're taking me to court. That's 20 grand. Hello? Yes, yes, sorry. Understood. Bye. Who was that? It was the listeners. They say, one more cheap lawyer gag and they're switching off. Sorry. Okay. You say you got information for me? That's right. Come in and take a seat. Okay, Colin. Here we are at the Queer Eye Boutique. These guys will give you everything you need to become a revolutionary. 
I'm not so sure about this. I've always kind of had the same style, you know. Don't be silly, Colin. You can't lead a rebellion dressed like someone shaved a monkey, covered it in glue and kicked it through River Island's men's section. Hello, what can I do for you? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm here to see a queer guy. Yeah, that's me. Oh, uh, I was expecting someone more, more what? Stereotypical and offensive, if I'm honest. No, don't worry. The writers are quite woke. Oh, good. Well, this lion and witch say I need to change my look a wee bit if I'm gonna lead the revolution against Ronnie Cray. Oh, so you're Colin? Yeah, we've been expecting you. So, outfit for revolution. Let's see what I've got. There we go. What? That's it? Yep. One red beret. It's perfect, Colin. Everything you need. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, queer guy. Anytime. Come on. What? Do something. Sorry, don't follow you. Really? Nothing? Okay, thanks, I guess. Let's go, guys. Oh, was that a customer? And it was! I gave him a lovely beret! Oh, you big boy! You made me miss it! Okay, Colin. We've gathered everyone outside to hear her speech. Are you ready? Aye! This beret has filled me with revolutionary fervour. I'm ready to storm the Winter Palace here. Okay. Out you go, Colin. Oppressed peoples of the Ghost Realm, I am Dr. Colin Appointment, and I am here to lead you in your struggle against a capitalist oppressor. Hold it right there, sir. Who are you? I'm a Hollywood lawyer. And this, sir, is a cease and desist letter. Cease and desist what? Are you planning to free these pieces of intellectual property? You're damn right, pal. And no one can stop me. Not while I'm wearing this beret. So you're not going to cease or desist? I'll cease you in a minute, mate, if you don't do one. I thought so. Here, take this. <laughs> What's this? A lawsuit. You're being sued, my friend, by Hollywood. See you in court next week. <laughs> Can the revolution survive a legal challenge? Will Stephen escape from jail? Will Pepper and Tristan ever find affordable housing? Find out in next week's exciting episode of Investigations of the Oddly Strange. Investigations of the Oddly Strange was written and performed by Pete and Fran Langhout. Please like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment. Thank you for listening.